I'm Mavis Robinson, your host, and today I'm joined by Phil Burgess. Phil Burgess is a, a lifetime uh, born resident, and, uh, and I'm very interested to hear about his experiences growing up in town. Welcome, Phil. Thank you. Thanks it's for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. So, did I lie? Did you, have you lived in Bourne all your life? or? I was born uh, in Buzzards Bay. That's Bourne? Yep. yep. Wait, in Buzzards Bay itself? Well, we went to St. Luke's Hospital. Okay. But uh, we were living in uh, Buzzers Bay, and anyone that's familiar with uh, Charlie Wallace's garage in Buzzers Bay, yep. we lived in a house right behind it. Oh, okay, yeah, right downtown. And so about nineteen, about nineteen forty-two, we went to Weymouth. Yep. Because my dad came back from Trinidad, and he went to work in the Four River Shipyard. He was in Trinidad as. He was down there. They were building uh, airstrips and for the government. And okay. Stuff like that. Okay. So we were up in uh, Weymouth for about 10 years, then we came back to Bourne because this is basically, you know, where my parents are from and yeah. we wanted to be back. How, how far back does your family go? Burgess is a... Is a uh, 16, uh, Thomas Burgess came to Sandwich in 1638 from Duxbury. Okay. So I don't know when he arrived in Duxbury, but about 1638 we... And so from 1638 till now, we only managed to move about... Uh, seven or eight miles so we're not <laughs> so a, a little bit of progress yeah, we're not a family that moves around a lot right 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 so, so d was your um do you did you ever live in your ancestral home or no wh where is that yeah, it's um captain nathaniel burgess home is the uh, was the uh used to be where the uh dainties live okay on county road just if you're going towards pocasset from uh Monia beach it's just after the cemetery on the right hand okay. side. Okay, yeah, yeah. Back then when he could, retired from the sea, he bought a strip of land that went all the way back and it included Toby Island. And there was no sure road at that time. So, yeah. you know, basically when land was not a big deal, they just, you know, just had a lot of land. He so his house was on county, but the property went, went all, the, all way. the way back to the water. Wow, wow. Yeah. And now what did he do with the property? Did he farm? They, did he they, they, what they did, they uh, down, in, they uh, did oyster, commercial oystering. Okay. And Edward, which was my, um, would be my great grandfather. He, w you know, went into the business with uh, Captain Nathaniel Burgess, and they uh, commercially uh, grew oysters and sold them in Boston, New York, wherever. Yeah, so, yeah. So. That's it. So it, I, that's interesting. I wasn't. I wouldn't think that um, for some reason. I wouldn't think that the oyster farming existed then yeah. but it's so it's not it's nothing nothing new under the sun we're yeah. doing it today okay. probably pretty pretty similar to the way they uh, yeah. they farmed back then yeah. wow hmm. so you you left left born came back as a 10 year old um, did you did you have people that you knew friends that you had already met or were you sort of like brand new to the town basically brand new to the town because of course my brothers when we lived here my brothers went to s elementary school or grade school where the uh, police station is now used to be the uh, used to be the grade school. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, that. And so okay. my brothers went there. Yeah. And then when we came back, of course, there was the Stoll School. Yep. Yep. And the high school. And where did you live when you when you came back? We came back. We what we did is initially we came back and we stayed with my uh, my father's sister. Okay. In Pocasset. Okay. And then we uh, they got a place on Old Bridge Road. I don't yeah. know where Old Bridge Road is. It's, uh, do you know where, um, well, Tiny Jim's Restaurant? You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Old Bridge Road. Okay. So okay. we stayed there until about 1960, 1956, and then uh, my parents moved into uh, uh, a little bungalow by the uh, town hall uh, okay. on Everett Road. Yeah, yeah. And basically I was there until I went into the service. Okay, all right. So, when, so you, you went to the Stoll School. And then, and then, did, where was the high school at that time? Did you go to Cody? Cody. Okay, so Cody was the high school. And uh, and what year did you graduate from 60. high school? You graduated in '60. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's kind of a really interesting time in our history. I mean, it was a real transition from a more conservative Eisenhower era of the '50s into what became, you know, a real wild decade. What yeah. What was your experience like? Uh, you know, they they talk about, you know. People of my age will say, boy, I remember back in the 50s or the 40s, wow, things were a lot different then. Well, there's, there's really not a, it, values have changed mm -hmm. and because 
times have changed. The you know computers, uh, iPads, and all this stuff has, has changed things. When I grew up here, we knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first name basis with all the members of the police department. Mm -hmm. If you did anything, the police didn't have to chase you because they knew who you were, so they'd just go see your father. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and it, it, it's, just, it's just different. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times the things that we did as kids, you know, you just got a spanking. Now today you end up in court. Things yeah. have changed. Yeah, yeah. Changed. So, and it was when I think about it, my first job it was, was working at tiny gyms, washing dishwasher mm -hmm. dishes, mm -hmm. and uh, I walked to work. Yeah, and came home. Yeah, and it was one o'clock, twelve thirty in the morning when I came home. And you were just a teenager. Just a teen, sixteen years old. Yeah, yeah. Times are different. Right, right. And we, you know, we have to adjust with times. Yeah. You know, so. So, so give me a feel for like a teenager, you know, in the late 50s, early 60s, what would, it, what would a summer day look like for you? Would you be, you know, if you, did you have your, were you driving around? Did you have your license? Most of it, to be honest with you, most of us, uh, we can go to our parents and say, you know, I need $5 because I want to go out on a date tonight. Yeah. You want $5, you better get a job because you're not going to get it any other way. Right, right. And so summers, I worked at Tiny gyms washing dishes mm -hmm. at night, mm -hmm. and whatever else. I, you know, I might do a little bit of prepping work. And then uh, during the day, at that time, a lot of us got jobs with the highway department. Oh, wow. As kids? Yeah, wow. because they didn't, have, um, they didn't have sweepers. Yeah. So we had brooms and we swept roads after the winter. Yeah. Did things like that. Yeah. So between. You know, working, it was pretty much, you know. Right. If you wanted to do anything, you had to make the money to do it. Right. So once you, once you earned a little pocket money, what are the things that you would do? What kinds of, what kinds of dates would you go on? Usually we were double dated a lot. Yeah. Back then. Yeah. Double dated. Usually we would go out, two places you'd go to eat. Tiny gyms mm -hmm. because they had the best Andy Paso, the meatball sandwiches, mm -hmm. and spaghetti and meat sauce. And you'd go there even though you worked there. You didn't get yeah. sick of it. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Never got sick of that. <laughs> and the other place was the um, uh, Chinese restaurant up in Wareham. Um, oh yeah. On the right hand side. The Hong Kong Garden. No, maybe? no, 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 no. That's <laughs> that's way after this one. Um, I can't remember the name. But anyways, on the right, the building is being torn down now. Okay. In those days, you could go out on a date, and it cost you like a couple of dollars for. A meal. Yep. Yep. And then a movie was maybe fifty cents. Right. 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 And so you know, for five dollars, you, you had could, a pretty nice yeah, night. You yeah. Have, you could have a good evening. What do you? What were you like? What What kind of wage were you making as a dishwasher? Ninety cents an hour. Okay. Yeah. All right. And that was that was good money back. Yeah. Then. Yeah. So a, a day's work gets you a day's worth of entertainment. That's with right. A little left over. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I. <laughs> You know, I, I think back to those times, and I think you know, it wasn't as confusing. It wasn't. It wasn't as you know, we 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 talked with people. Yeah. We, you know, we we'd sit around and talk. Yeah. Yeah. And now today, the kids text. I know. I know. They, they don't, Although, they yeah. Don't talk and is that bad? I don't know. It's different. It's right. different. Right. It isn't right. a case of bad. Right. Well, we, were, we were sort of talking earlier that, um, you know, it is easy to be an older person and just be confused. You know, like kids these days have a different lifestyle mm -hmm. and, and a different way of mm -hmm. communicating and doing anything. And, you know, who's to say which one's better? <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. Um, I, just, I personally, I think, uh, I think the kids uh, uh, a lot better behave today than my, probably in my generation. Yeah. I mean, we did yeah. a lot of crazy things. And I don't think the kid, the, the difference is, is, how we deal with things. I think one of the biggest things that always is, uh, I notice a difference is, is um, there isn't the, I don't call it respect or fear. I mean, if an adult spoke to you, mm -hmm. you know, the, you listen to them. Right. Well, because that adult probably knew your, your, your oh, yeah. parents. <laughs> and and yeah. you knew that how your parents were going to react. Yeah. 
they didn't want to hear your side of the story. And yeah. Today's a little bit different. So you said uh, you guys would get into some wild times. Like, just tell us one good story, or what good wild teenage story. No. The statute of limitations is way, <laughs> way past. So, no. <laughs> what's a good, what's a good example of of ways that kids might have gotten in trouble in your day? Guy, it's just. just <laughs> it's that bad? <laughs> Tell you what. Yeah. Uh, because this didn't happen here in Bourne. Mm -hmm. uh, used to cut through a fellow's, a, a man's yard. It was easy versus going all the way around. So we used to cut through it. So one day he caught one of, the, one of us going through his yard and he grabbed, you know, shook him up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know give him a kick in the butt and told him, you don't cut through my yard anymore. So we, we just didn't think that was, that was over the hill, that was. Yeah. So what we did is we, he was a call fireman. Mm -hmm. So we tied his car to his front porch. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the next call? The rest, the rest is history. Wow. <laughs> Today, yep. I'd probably brain my kids if they did Right, right, right. So times were different then. Yep. And you're right that the, it does seem like the consequences, you mentioned earlier, you know, kids would go to jail yeah. these days for yeah. some of the hijinks that they yeah. got up to in the past. And the thing is, some, when you're a kid, you do things that you don't, you don't, you don't think of the consequences. Right, right. And um, today the consequences are very serious. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. generation, they weren't. Mm -hmm. Do you still, um, are you still in touch with uh, kids that you went to high school with? Have you, have you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, yeah, uh, kids that I were very friendly with in yeah. high school, we still stay in touch today. Yeah. And uh, that is one thing that, you know, even my wife, uh, she says three, um, well, two girls that she went through grade school, mm -hmm. in high school. And they very close to that. And is she, did she grow up in Bourne as well? Yeah. All right. Did you yeah. know each other growing up here? Yeah. In fact, well, we went to uh, high school. We went through grade school and high school together. She dated a, a friend of mine. Yeah. And we double dated in high school. Oh, nice. Mm. Wow. So, so, so then, so how did you get back in touch with her? Came home on leave and uh, I tried to contact her fellow she was going with because we were good friends in yeah. high school and I talked to his mother she says he's not, he's not here and I said do you know where he's at she says no I don't and mm -hmm. I said well I know where he's at so I called her yeah and uh, next thing you know did you find your friend or nope. <laughs> lucky lucky for you <laughs> yeah. so we started dating I went overseas while mm -hmm. I was overseas we wrote Yes, yeah, so you said what well, you were on leave. So you were in, you went to the military straight out of high school. I went, yeah. Okay, and mm. and what branch of the military? Air Force. And so that brings a lot of travel. Where oh. where did where did that bring you? Um, I went to Lackland for basic training. From Lackland, I went to Chinook Air Force Base in Illinois for uh, tech training, mm -hmm. and then from there I went to uh, Keflavik to Iceland. Um, oh wow. The naval station in. Uh, oh wow! How long were you in Iceland? I need a year. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty unique place. I, I liked it. Yeah, liked have, it. have you been back since? No, uh, since your time I had there? a chance to go back, but I opt not to. Yeah, yeah. I had a chance to go back. It uh, it was nice. It was um, um, it was very interesting. Yeah. Because it was you know it's a different culture. Right, right, right. So, um, so then I was supposed to be going to uh, from there to uh, Tachikawa, Japan, mm -hmm. and. Uh, then uh, next thing I know, I got word that I wasn't going to Tachikawa, Japan. I was going to what they call the armpit of the Air Force. The armpit of the Air Force? Yeah, and I says, where's that? And he says, Otis Air Force Base. I says, oh, oh. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> he says, are you familiar with it? I says, yeah, I was born and raised in Buzz's Bay. And mm -hmm. He said, oh, you like it? I says, I joined the Air Force to see. Right, right. But to it get worked a, out yeah. good. Worked out good. Yeah, yeah. That was so, so it really was just chance that you yeah. uh, were assigned to Otis? Yeah. Yeah. I, wasn't, I didn't volunteer for it. Right, right. And so is that what kind of brought you back to Bourne the, mm -hmm. the, for the final time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we got back here first. I didn't want to be here, but then uh, wife and I got married. We mm -hmm. bought land over in Katama and built a house, and uh, we settled in, and the Air Force says, well, you look like you're happy. We're going to ship you out. 
Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> so we managed to live in the house for a week before we were shipped out. Oh, no. So Where'd you go? Went to um, Griffiths Air Force Base, Upper State New York, okay. Rome, New York. Is just you or the whole family? The whole family. Okay, yeah. And uh, I told Kathy when I, we came up for re-enlistment, I said, well, we need to discuss what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Because if I re-up, we're going to stay for 20. Yeah. And I, I knew she, she wanted to come back home. Yeah, yeah. But she said, what's up to you? So we kind of made the decision. We came back here. And um, um, that's the situation. Any regrets? None. No? None at all. <laughs> no. I, 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 yeah. It's the military is is easy on the guys. It's yeah, tough yeah. on the spouse. Yep, yeah. Because uh, and even now in in the guard, you do a lot of TDYs in the guard today. What does TDY mean? A temporary duty change. Okay. So I went about seven years. I was down in Panama. Oh wow. So she's home raising four kids. Right, and right. All the problems that go with raising kids. So yeah. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. It's tough. Wow. So when it after 30, about 33, 35 years, I you said I that's about retired. it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, yep. now I can just stay at home and do whatever I want. And and uh, and so, did you always know? Did you know when you left Born that you would someday come back, or or um, did it just? I mean, I, you know, I never really thought about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's many places I went to, you know, that that I like. Yeah. Um, but uh, I just, I'm, I'm very, I'm glad we did what we did. Yeah. You know, yeah. we got to see different parts of the country and we got to settle down where we wanted to settle down. Yeah. And you've seen the town, and you've seen the town go through a lot of changes. A lot of changes. What's your favorite spot in town now? Where do you like to hang out? I really like, I like where we're at right now. I really like that. You know, I grew up in Buzzers Bay. Buzzers Bay was really nice for kids because mm -hmm. there's a lot of kids over there. Yeah. You had the community building as, as growing up as, as a, a youngster growing up. Buzzers Bay is a nice place to be. Yeah. But yeah. now at my age, you like, Thomas is a nice place. You like place. it, Katama. It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. It's quiet. Well, and it's fun that it almost seems a little bit like, you know, where the Cape Bourne is, is somewhat rural, but you had a little taste of an urban experience, being able to actually walk to a job and, yes. and you know, and, and yes. having those, you and that's know, a big thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. all of, you didn't need a car. Right, right. Because, uh, you know, uh, worked at tiny gyms, worked at the highway department, and uh, was an usher at the Buzzers Bay Theater. Yeah, yeah. So you, you could walk to all of them. Right. So. Now, when you came back into town, were your parents still living here? Yes. Okay. And, and, and th did they live here all their lives? Yes. Yeah. Except for that shot tenure up in um, Oh, right Weymouth. in Weymouth. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. They were, uh, both of them were born and raised here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a funny thing. We are. My mother's a Perry. Okay. What's her name? Uh, Gladys. Gladys. Okay. But not, um, you know, everyone gets confused because she was Gladys Burgess, but there's also a Gladys Burgess in, oh. in Bourne. Okay, okay. And that's Blanche Burgess's mother. Yes. So okay. And they go. So people must get your families right. entwined all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like they always say, you got to be careful when you're talking about Cape Codders. Right, right. There's a lot of inbreeding, mm -hmm. and so you could be talking about someone's relative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. So, so uh, is, now your mother, I mean, did she, how, how long did she live in town from, so was she born here? Yeah, sure, she was born here. Okay, yeah. okay, wow. I mean, they were, in and fact, they, they live where the fire station is now. I mean, not the fire, the police station in Buzzers Bay. Yeah. Okay, it used to be the grammar school here. Well, yep. my mother lived in the house in back of there oh, as wow. a job. Oh, wow, wow. So. And did I read somewhere that she was, she was honored with a, like, a special, like, a, you know, for living long That's, or? Blanche's mother. That's Blanche's mother. Okay. Okay. So that's so there's an example of uh, getting those two entwined. Yeah. Wow. No, wow. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, history is it's interesting. I because I I look at um, you know you get as we get older. My uh, my youngest daughter. She's always been interested in the family history. Yeah. And I have two. And my aunt. When uh, she passed away, she she gave me a lot of the records from mm -hmm. the family because I probably was the only one that was really cons interested yeah. in the history of the family. Yeah. And uh, so you, you find that you 
family history is interesting. It is. It, I've only recently become interested now that I, I work for the Bourne Historical mm -hmm. Society and there's a treasure trove of old family records mm -hmm. there and it was something that when I was younger, you know, yeah. it just seemed like, well, who, who really cares? But now, like, you know, look, searching back and, and realizing that those were all individuals living full lives and yeah. it really is fascinating. I think hindsight, I wish I'd have talked more with my parents. Really, yeah. And, and yeah. about their childhood and about my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard about him from people that work for him and stuff like that, but. What was your, what's your grandfather's name? Arthur. Okay. Arthur okay. Clifton Burgess. Yeah. And, and, and he was in construction. On, okay. In, in the town of Bourne. Can you g give me a story? Tell me a story about your grandfather. He was a hard man to work for. Mm -hmm. um, I talked with Hoot Sanford one day about him. He said he was a really, really tough guy to work for. Yeah. Very demanding. Yeah. And uh, I think I found out more about Captain Nathaniel Burgess than I did about Edward, which would be in the chain, it would be Captain Nathaniel Burgess, um, Edward Burgess, then Arthur C. Burgess, then okay. my father. That okay. would be the chain. Um, and I found what was interesting about um, Captain Nathaniel Burgess is the fact that uh, he had a choice as it, a young man growing up that he could be a farmer mm -hmm. or he could go to sea. And he opted going to sea. And I'm thinking to myself, if you have any ex understanding of what it was like to go to sea right. during that time frame, I can't imagine. The fact that being a farmer was big, worse. Right. <laughs> because if I had, my choice would have been be a farmer and right. not go to sea. Right. But at 15 years old, he went to sea. 15. At 25, he was 25 years old when he became a full captain. Wow, wow. And in those days, the wife was more common to go to sea with her husband than she was to drive, uh, go f 50 miles by land. Really? Yeah. Huh. So Did your grandmother go to sea with, yep. wow, oh wow. And and how long would they be gone for? 18 months, two years. Uh -huh. yeah. But they would, they would go into port, uh, they, most of the sailing was off the coast of um, South America. Yeah. And they went into Peru a lot in Chile. Yeah. And um, Edward Burgess, who was born, I think it was, uh, 1852, I think it was, he died, and because he wasn't baptized before his death, mm -hmm. he couldn't be buried in the cemetery. In oh, wow. Peru. So what they did is they put him in a keg of rum and brought him back here. Wow. And he's buried in the monument Oh, my cemetery. gosh. Just a, just a baby? Just wow. a baby. Wow, wow. But a lot of the kids were born in, uh, in South, South America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I can't believe because, you know, just the wooden ships and the kind of the weather that they were out and whaling. And I'm saying to myself, I can't imagine that you would choose doing this versus right. being a farmer. Right, right. Although maybe, I mean, it was, it was uh, probably a more lucrative choice well, at the time. Well, financially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah sort of a, a, a shorter period of, of yeah. very, very difficult right. work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But not, not I mean, in fact, I laugh whenever people come visit and they say, Where, where's your boat from? I said, I don't have a boat. How come? I said, because I don't like the water. <laughs> right. you got to be kidding. You, live you don't on like Cape the water. <laughs> no. Never liked it? I, yeah, as a kid, I liked, liked it. Yeah. You know, swimming and stuff. But yeah. Going but out in boats? No, it doesn't. Really? But then going in planes don't impress me, and I served 30 years plus in the Air Force. Well, you know, I have to say, there's a real parallel for me in hearing about the story of Captain Nathaniel and you know that was like the one choice. There was no Air Force back there, right. and I feel like you made a similar choice. You know, g going into the Air Force, being forced to travel, being for you know you just you talked about how Panama. You you know you spent years in Panama while Kathy was home raising the children, mm -hmm. and in a, in an interesting way, it's uh, it, there's a, a real parallel um, life there to yeah. your your great great grandfather. In in fact, uh, you know, when I look at pictures of him, I say, gee, I see a similarity there. Yeah. He's yeah. almost as ugly as me. Is <laughs> <laughs> so. so is there anything that you would have done differently, um, you know, set the way back machine and, and make a different choice in life? It, it, it's funny. Um, when I graduated from high school, I was going to go to Swain School of Design. Okay. I was accepted. I went up there and uh, had a tour yeah. in New Bedford. And, uh, 
I went through there because people said I had talent, and I went through there and I was looking at. And I said, I don't have any talent. Well, what now? What was your talent? What were what was it? Art, okay. drawing. Okay. You know, and I looked at what they were doing. I said, I don't have any talent. Yeah. There's no way. Are you kidding me? Because yeah. in that field, you have to be really good to right. make it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so I said, Nah. So then I came back home and I, I said, What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And I saw the Air Force recruiter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Join the Air Force. Mm-hmm. So what happened to that little seed of talent that almost had you go to an art school? Do you, are you doing anything with that? No. No? No. In fact, it's like someone that's good at photography. Mm-hmm. My cousin was very good at photography, and um, I told him, I said, you know, why don't you, Peter, why don't you do this professionally? He says, then it's not fun. Right. Right. And that's the <laughs> difference. There's a difference between a hobby and a profession. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, to me, I, th I think I did the right thing. I. Looking back, if I had it to do all over again, I'd do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Although nothing starts stops you from going to get some canvases today and uh, and some. If I wanted to, yeah, you could do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do. I get uh, pleasure when I see someone that's I, that, because you know, they talk about art. Well, art is in the behold of your your eye. You right. you look at it and you you like this. Right. Right. Someone else look at it and say, "Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> this guy's on drugs." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it is. And and I uh, I was talking with a friend of mine one day, and he said about art. He says, "Art, as far as he's concerned, money has nothing to do with art. It's what you like. Mm -hmm. If you see something you really like, you don't really care what it is." Right. Right. Um, when we were out in um, uh, Arizona, we went to a like, and I saw. I said to my wife, I said, now, this is talent. Yeah. This is beautiful what they do. Mm -hmm. Really, really Well, it's beautiful. And the, the landscape out there is so inspiring. Really, yes. Yeah, yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah. But then I say, to me, it would, the, the, the dollar figure on what they're asking has nothing to do with it. Right. If you see something you really like. Yeah. It may be only $15, but if you really like it. That's, yeah, then, yeah. 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 It's like a bottle of wine. Oh, I know. If, I can't tell the <laughs> if it's If it's $40 and it doesn't taste good, right. what right. good is it? <laughs> right. If it's $3 and it tastes good, then, then it's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same thing. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you wanted to tell us about the, the history of Bourne or, or your own personal history, a little, uh, a little uh, pearl of wisdom for our audience before um, we say goodbye? Uh, Oh, oh, Captain, you had a question? <laughs> <laughs> captain, actually, this is a Captain, my co-host, and uh, oftentimes if I, if I haven't asked the right questions by the end, he jumps right in. Uh, and he did want to know, did you ever have a special pet in your life, and, uh, and what do you think of uh, the dogs of Bourne? Um, <laughs> the funny thing about it, I was a dog person. Yeah. My wife is a cat person, and guess what? She wins. <laughs> Well, they do say that's a uh, happy wife, happy life. So that's uh, well, <laughs> you know the dog. It's a, the thing about dog, they ha you have to, they have to run. They have to. Yeah. When I was growing up, you didn't have to have a leash on them. Right. Right. Now today, right. they gotta be. Yep. There's a lot of rules. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of rules yeah. on it, and it's just yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> to me, it's a dog needs to run. Yeah. Yeah. It needs to run loose. Yep. He certainly does. <laughs> How old is? Well, he's five years old. Five. He's five oh, years old. But Phil, I just want to say um, thank you so much for being here today um, and for sharing your stories. And, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and I, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. And I just want to thank our audience for joining us today as we took a little glimpse through this window to uh, the past and present of Warren. Thanks for being here.